If you or someone you know is thinking about buying a home, you may be wondering what you can afford. While affordability is important, the real question is what's your home buying power? In today's video, we'll cover what makes up your buying power, how it is calculated, how does it affect your purchasing power, and what four factors influence your overall buying power. As a bonus, at the end of this video, I'll let you know how you can get our free report, What's Your Home Buying Power? So let's dive right on in. Your buying power is more than how much of your income you have available to make a mortgage payment. It also comprises how much you save for a down payment, the proceeds from a home sale, and the amount you're qualified to borrow. Are you in the market for a new home or an investment property? One of the first questions you'll probably ask is, what kind of house can I get? And what can we afford? Many buyers become so caught up in how much they can afford that they don't realize their total buying power. That is the total amount of purchasing potential they actually have. So what is buying power? And how is it defined? Your buying power is comprised of the total amount of money you have available each month for a mortgage payment. This means the money you have each month after your fixed bills and expenses, plus any money you've saved for a down payment, the proceeds from the sale of your current home, if it's applicable, and the amount of money you're qualified to borrow. All of these will impact your overall buying power. When you take all of this into consideration, you may find you're able to purchase a larger home or a home in a more desirable neighborhood, or you may realize you should be looking for a home in a lower price point. So what four things impact buying power? There are four assets that will impact your overall buying power. Number one, your credit score. A strong credit score signifies a good overall credit history and can help you log in a lower interest rate. Do you know your credit score? Number two, your debt income ratio. The lower the ratio of your debts to income, the better the risk you may be perceived as by lenders. Number three, your assets. Proof of where the money is coming from for the purchase of the property will be required. Think in terms of cash funds on hand, equity realized from the sale of a property, and any investments you may have in your portfolio. These funds are your assets. And number four, down payment. The more you're able to put down, the less you will have to borrow. And with a down payment of 20% or more, you won't have to purchase mortgage insurance. Housing affordability is a metric used by real estate experts to assess whether or not the average family earning an average wage could qualify for a mortgage on the average home. Although this amount is essential to creating an overview of the real estate market, it's not a factor you should consider in your home search in its entirety. What may be considered affordable to you based on your income and other factors may be different than what's affordable to the average buyer. Why buying power matters. A common misunderstanding is that a home's list price determines whether or not you can purchase it. And although it's important to look at the price tag, it's essential to consider what your monthly payment will be if you own the home. After all, the purchase price doesn't include housing related expenses such as utilities, annual property taxes, homeowner insurance, and associated monthly fees, and any maintenance or repairs. Figuring out the payment will prevent you from overestimating or underestimating your buying power. Remember, you live with your monthly payment, not the sales price. Ensure that you are comfortable with your monthly payments. Once you have clarity on your buying power, you'll be able to buy the home you want instead of settling for a home because you feel it's the only one you can afford. It will also prevent you from becoming house poor, a common term for someone who puts all their money as a down payment, leaving them with nothing left over for bills outside of their house payments. And these scenarios can negatively impact your lifestyle. So your buying power will enable you to get the home that you want without sacrificing the lifestyle that you want. So how do you calculate your buying power? You might be wondering, how do I know what my buying power is? Buying power is calculated by adding the money that you saved up for a down payment and or the money you made from selling your home, minus any fees and mortgage payoffs, to all of your sources of income and investments that could be used to make your monthly payment. Make sure that you're including your monthly pay, commissions or tips, dividends from investments, payments from rental properties, or any other monthly income you receive, as well as the loan amount you're willing to finance and can qualify for. Most lenders advise buyers to spend no more than 32% of their gross pre-tax income on housing, meaning all your income and sources of revenue prior to paying taxes. Make sure you factor in not only your mortgage payment, but also your utilities, your property taxes, your home insurance to the cost of housing. Whether you plan to spend the average, play it conservative, or split the difference, it's up to you. Ensure that you feel comfortable with the payments. While 
while it's tempting to take out a large loan in order to purchase the home of your dreams, keep in mind the less money you have to borrow, the stronger your buying power may be. Now don't forget to factor in property taxes and insurance. Now these are often added to your principal and interest of your mortgage payment. The money used to pay down the balance of your loan and charge for borrowing the money. Now since these numbers vary, check the taxes of the properties you're interested in. Property taxes will differ based on the region the property is located in, the size of the land and the home and the upgrades to the property. Here in the province of Ontario, taxes are based on current value assessment of the property. Moving from one area to another may increase or decrease the property taxes due on a similar type of home. Also, remember to factor in home insurance for the property as well. You can contact your insurer for a general quote. Once you have these figures, divide each by 12 to estimate how much they'll add to your overall monthly payment amounts. If you haven't sold your current home yet, a comparative market assessment, often referred to as a CMA, will give you a general idea of how much you may get for your home based on what other homes in the area have recently sold for. You can contact our team for a free home valuation. Would you like to see what kind of homes you can get within your buying power? Give us a call. We're happy to provide insight so that you can ultimately make the best and informed decision for you and your family. You can call or text the number below or schedule a 20 minute no obligation phone consultation. Simply click on the link below or scan the QR code. We are happy to help. My name is Evelyn Lopez with the Evelyn Lopez Realty Team and I'm here to help.